are here with Aluwale Bambosi, a middleweight who has a big fight coming up at Ring of Combat 51. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, I'm good. I'm doing great. Good. Now, Aluwale, you have a new opponent. Well, actually, it's an old opponent since you were scheduled to fight Brian Booth at Ring of Combat 50. But Booth is now replacing Mike Stewart. So tell our viewers what happened. Okay, so for the most part, um, Mike Stewart, um, I, I guess he was going through some uh, some personal things, so he had to, I guess, um, you know, I guess make his way out of the bout. So you know, I'm not too sure about what that consists of, but I know that um, Brian Booth replaced him, and uh, I was supposed to face Brian Booth as you mentioned uh, for ROC 50, but something happened with him too. I, I don't know, but uh, but I guess now he's ready, and uh, I'm always ready. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> How does this late switch affect your game plan, or maybe it doesn't affect it at all since you were supposed to fight him at RSC 50? Um, to be honest, um, you know, I, uh, you know, no offense to Brian, but, uh, you know, Mark, Mike Stewart was more of a, how can I say, a more experienced veteran uh, okay. and I would say a wrestler than, than Brian Booth. Uh, both guys are wrestlers or, or have a, a somewhat of a wrestling base. Um, but at the same time, uh, I just, you know, it, all I had to do was make some minor switch-ups for the most part. Um, but both guys have a, a very similar style, so it wasn't too bad of a, of a last-minute mm -hmm. change. Okay. So you feel like you match up stylistically okay with, um, with him then? Yes, per, I mean it's it, you know it's a basic it's a you know for, I guess from a viewer standpoint it's more of a a stand up guy versus a wrestler which is really what right. a lot of the fans like to see you know opposites uh, that that attract yeah. um, but you know I'm going to surprise a lot of individuals with regards to you know my ground game as well because uh, you know my last fight I was able to show a little bit of that um, mm -hmm. but you know. In my fights moving forward, it, you know, the fight could go anywhere. But, it, you know, if it does go on the ground, I, I will happily oblige it. Because at the end of the day, I train with uh, Luis Alzarado, who is an expert on the ground. And uh, he's one of my, my, my dearest friends, teammates, and best coaches. And I've basically assimilated all his techniques. Uh, I'm still learning. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I'm like a, a 185 version of him on the ground. You could say. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Any extra any extra pressure on you because it is a title defense? Uh, to be honest, uh, it, it it's not. I don't feel too much pressure. To be honest, um, I I'm just gonna go out there and you know do what I what I what I do, which is you know put on a great performance, my best performance. Every time I get out there, it's my best performance. Uh, it's basically do or die. And uh, whether I have a title or not, but obviously having a title makes it that much worthwhile or that right. much worth giving my all. Um, and that's what's gonna that's what the fans are gonna see. Um, that's what mm -hmm. ROC is gonna. Talk. They're going to get my all. I'm going to give every single bit of uh, who I am, and that's a lot to handle, to be honest. I don't mean to sound cocky, but when I give my all, it's, it's fireworks. You're undefeated with four wins, and during each of those fights, there's been a TKO in the first round. Pretty impressive, but yet you told me in our pre-interview you're not always looking for the TKO. I'm really not, to be honest. My whole thing is to go in there and get clean hits. I'm I'm, I'm all about mm. um, uh, accuracy, and I'm all about efficiency. So I don't like to waste strikes. You know, um, I'm very calculated to lie. Um, and, you know, yeah, uh, you know, I take MMA very serious. You know, like for me, uh, it's, you know, it's still – uh, a shock to me that I have my master's degree, but I was never really a scholar type of individual. You know what I mean? Like I, I was always doing the athletics, things of that nature. But, you know, what, what my parents instilled in me uh, allowed me to pursue and conquer that um, challenge. But at the same time, you know, MMA is something that I was, I, I, honestly, I was just born to be great at. So um, I take it very, very seriously. You know, um, I don't train like a man who's talented. I train like a man who has no talent. You know, or a man um, possessed, it sounds like. <laughs> or a man possessed. In other words, possessed with the fire and the energy. So that definitely sounds like you. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of people, yeah, it definitely does sound like you. Um, you mentioned that you have a master's degree in public administration. You also have a bachelor's degree in social work. You have some future plans that you're going to use these for. So tell our viewers how you're planning on using this in the future. 
All right. So for the most part, um, you know, uh, you know, my life, my life goal is basically to own a chain of global recreational centers, um, and I plan on, you know, competing uh, to fund this recreational center, and it's something that God has put on my heart. Honestly, I feel like it's it's what I'm alive for, you know, and it's pretty mm-hmm. much going to be like a Disney a Disneyland uh, for athletes of all ages. So, um, but it's also going to uh, affect the community. In a positive way, obviously, um, with regards to its location, wherever it's located, it's it's going to be a, a safety for athletes, um, but also um, with, with the community to their heads and, you know, the youth, you know, and, and any other individual can, you know, seek, you know, social services. Wow, very interesting. Good for you. How did you get the name, the Holy War Angel, your nickname? Okay, so I am a devout Christian. I am a serious Christian. Like, I don't play no games with my relationship with God. And before I decided to really take MMA serious, I was like, God, I need a name. You know, and I don't want just a name that is selfish or that is self-driven. I need a name that really allows people to know that there's accountability that relates to you. You know, um, there's a fighter that is all about you. And I prayed about it, and he gave me the Holy War Angel, not for nothing, too. The name itself is pretty powerful, you know? Very uh, holy. powerful. Holy is a, obviously is a very divine kind of word. And War Angel, you, I mean, come on, you know what I mean? Like, so it was just the perfect name for, you know, God's, I guess, perfect fighter, you could say. So, you know, I'm ready to prove that. <laughs> I'm ready to prove that I'm God's best. I'm one of God's best uh, in that Good case. for you. Good for you. Now, your name also has a special meaning from your country of Nigeria. Tell our viewers what that means. Uh, my my name, Oluwale, basically means God God has arrived or God coming to my home. Olu means God. Wale means home. So Oluwale, God come home or God enter home. So uh, for the most part, yeah, that's, that's what my name means. So it's just fitting, you know, how everything, uh, I guess, ties into who I am as a mixed martial artist because um, God has given me an evangelistic tool um, to spread his love with regards okay. to Jesus, his peace. So I come out to Christian music, Hillsong, um, music, uh, which is also a church that I go to, a Christian church that I go to. Um, and I hope that, you know, when I come out, uh, and when I perform, that individuals can see the light that God has given me and the, like, the same light that he can give them. You know, because in my opinion, I, I feel as though as human beings, we really don't know what we're doing. I mean, we could try our best to go to school, to plan for the future, but who knows if those endeavors are going to be successful. But mm-hmm. God, sovereignty, he knows what's going to be successful. He knows what, who, what and who you're going to be. So when you focus on him, when you seek him, he expedites your process as far as becoming the person you're supposed to be. And I'm a prime example of that. Now, you mentioned that you perform. So are you singing at the church, or is this another secret talent we don't know about? <laughs> no, no, no. But when I mean by perform, I meant like when I'm in the cage performing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, I just want to check on that. So no, what uh, do you like to do with your free time, then? It doesn't sound like you have much of it, though. Um. Oh, wow. Um, you're right about that. To be honest, I'm a workaholic. I have several gigs, um, gigs that pertain to, you know, obviously being a coach, um, an MMA coach. Uh, I'm also a security guard. Uh, I'm, wow. I've, I've recently been to, involved with uh, catering. So I'm doing all these things just to, you know, uh, maintain my financial uh, situation because I do live on my own. I also have a four-year-old son, uh, and he's going to school and all that stuff. So I have to obviously make sure I'm, you know, I have time for that. Uh, obviously, uh, I also have what else? What else? What else? Uh, training, and that's no joke. Obviously, so my training has to, you know, weekly there has to be a certain amount of training that I put in, um, in order in order for me to be, you know, a legit pro or a successful pro, right, and right. I know that I'm ready for the UFC, so no excuses, you know, and I'm one of those sort of individuals, I don't like to blame or point the finger, I just do, I, I keep my mouth shut, and I just do what I have to do, and uh, it's paying off so far, you know, um, I can't wait to eventually compete in the UFC, because that's where I belong, and I'm going to keep proving that, I'm going to keep proving myself, um, and hopefully one day, you know, uh, you know the team at the UFC will see that this guy's for real and you know he's he's passionate about what he does you know and he's hard working that's another yeah. thing too yeah it's one thing passionate but it's one thing to have um you know you know a hard work ethic that relates to it so 
I'm willing to work, and I'm also willing to be passionate and excited about what I do. Well, I think with that determination and passion, you should end up at the UFC. Question, um, you've been quite outspoken about John Jones' fall from grace. Would you like to talk about that here? Ah, oh, well, um, to be honest, yeah, why not? John Jones, I love you, man, you know, and um, at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's, it's a common case of if you're not, if your heart isn't in the right place, eventually you'll fall. And I don't really know what related to John Jones, you know, uh, mm. I guess doing what he did. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I'm pretty sure he's going to learn from it, or, or if he has already, and God willing, he'll come back stronger, uh, a better person, better fighter. And um, at the end of the day, you know, this is what Jesus is all about. You know, uh, we're, none of us are perfect, even myself. Um, but I understand how close I have to be to him and in, 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 in every day seeking him. Make sense? So I have to see every day because I know that if I don't, I'm going to fall back to my carnal ways, to my old man ways. And when I say old man ways, I mean uh, with regards to sinning, you know, and we're all born sinners. Um, but at the end of the day, we seek God so that we could eventually omit that sin. And, and purify ourselves. And right now, I'm at that point. I'm at that point in my life where, you know, sin isn't a, in a, isn't a factor in my life. You know, things of which I mentioned, key factors in my life that I mentioned earlier: son, training, working. Those are key factors. For, you know, representing God. And God has 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 been amazing with regards to being faithful and, like I said, expediting my my purpose. My, your my ultimate destiny. goal. Your, your ultimate goal and your destiny. Anything else you'd like to add today? Well, you know, see one MMA is one of the greatest uh, MMA co- uh, MMA gyms, sorry, in uh, New York City. And thanks to Ken Ning, you know, I was able to, who's one of my greatest supporters and sponsors, uh, I was able to, you know, basically train there for, for about two to three years. And because of him, you know, I'm on my way to the to the, to the UFC, you know, and, and, and to greatness, let's just say, you know, to greatness and, and all that that encompasses. So I just want to thank Ken, Ken Ning for that. And also my pastor from Hillsong, one of the pastors from Hillsong Church in Rex Duval will be cornering me in my fight. So um, wow, I'm excited about that. that's awesome. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah. And I'm also that's- recently I've been a part of um, a team with regards to my time no coach because I just recently got my on Taekwondo and uh, now my Taekwondo coach is a little bit more willing to embrace MMA so me and him are going to partner to open up a MMA gym in the Bronx where I am originally from and grew up and I still live here in the Bronx as well wow, so good uh, for you I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a big be a part of, uh, you know, establishing an MMA gym. So I'm, I'm super excited. And there's a lot of good things, you know, going on in my life right now. So I can't complain. I'm happy for you, Alawale. It sounds like you don't sleep much, though, with all this going on. The most successful people in the world, honestly, I don't think they get as much sleep as well. So you know what? If, that, if, that's, what's gonna, if that's what it's going to take to be successful and to conquer life, then you know what? Sleep. You can, you can, you can, you can move. You know, you can move away from me. <laughs> I have to agree with you because I work seven days a week, but for me, every weekend's all about MMA, so it's a joy. Alawali Babosi, I thank you for your time. I wish you good luck against, against Brian Booth at Ring of Combat Fifty One, and I very much enjoyed this interview. And I hope I get a chance to speak with you again. Oh, definitely. I can't wait. Hopefully, in the UFC. I can't wait for that. <laughs> 